but it was Virginia really who was out front running that game the whole way. How important is the start here for the Crimson? The start of the season has been critical for the Crimson, but also for today, right down the middle, like we talked about, face-offs for both teams are a point that they're each trying to figure out. The face-off is going to be crucial today. We'll take you through why as we go through. It's Thomas Colucci, the grad student from New Jersey, to take it for Virginia. On the other side for Harvard, Andrew DiGennaro, the junior, is the one who will take most of them for Harvard. Virginia, which had such stability among their Fogos for years, it felt like. Now, all of a sudden, it's kind of been a rotating door this year. They are without Anthony Gobriel, the junior from Dallas, once again today. So it's Colucci who gets tasked with the first faceoff for the Cavaliers. This is going to be a great battle at the faceoff backs. I think the midfield will tell a tremendous amount about which way this game goes. Ground balls off the wings. Colucci had it momentarily, and now the ground ball is picking up by Virginia. Ben Weyer and Virginia nearly threw it away, but Nunes is back to get it. And we get set to go here. Sellout crowd here at Georgia. The reigning ACC Offensive Player of the Week. He's already UVA's career leader in goals, and he scores his 37th of this young season. So a one nothing start for Virginia. It's hard not to notice right when they came onto the field today, you and I and Joel were talking about it. it this Virginia team is just such a big group when you look at them. There's so much size on this team. Coach Tiffany has always played these games on paper, but at least on paper, it feels like that's the one spot where if Harvard can take advantage of their man up chances against a Virginia team that struggled there a little bit defensively, that's a real opportunity for the Crimson. Eric, I agree. That's a position where coaches can actually impact the game. The scouting report at Jordan Field, it is packed all the way around. As Tiffany talked about, they've been lucky. They've been able to come up here to New England a couple of times because they obviously played in a Final Four in Hartford a couple of times. But had to come up, scheduled it this year. It's Virginia who... 2-1 lead for the Wahoos here late in the first quarter in Cambridge. One of the big keys for Virginia coming into this season was what the Cavaliers were going to do at the face-off ends. They graduated Petey LaSala, the all-time NCAA record holder in face-offs taken, and then Mac Eldridge also transferred to Penn. That left UVA with only Gable Braun as a face-off man. He missed all of last season because of injury. So what did head coach Lars Tiffany do? He went into the portal and found not one, not two, but three new face-off men. That's one more transfer than Virginia usually takes at all. Harvard, even there, kind of found themselves in a little bit of an unsettled sequence and took advantage. So Spidell with his second career goal, the first year from Long Island. And we have a 2-2 tie. It's been interesting. We talked so much about where would the face-offs be in this game. We haven't had that many face-offs because there hasn't been nearly as many goals as you might have expected between these two teams. Great point, Eric. And I've been really excited. That was 3-2 lead for Harvard as John Arndt, the sophomore, with his sixth goal of the season. After scoring three a year ago, and the Crimson are right back on possession off the face-off. So Harvard now four for seven on the face-off so far today. Matt Barocco getting his opportunity today to impact the game for the Crimson at the face-off X. So we've definitely seen some different guys, some different rotations for the Crimson. Uh, Jerry Byrne has shown here. I was going to make the comment earlier, I love the band at the lacrosse games. I love them <laughs> showing up in the spring, not just the fall. Yeah, it's really a, a cool atmosphere here. You mentioned it this week. What's changed offensively? Maybe it's just the shots are going in, but what adjustments have you seen that Harvard's made here in the second quarter that's allowed them to go on this run? I've always believed that when the weather kind of turns, when the rainy season kind of leaves a little bit, you're no longer a freshman, you're no longer a sophomore, you have a role in the offense, you have a role in the defense, and you're a more comfortable part of the from Trumbull, Connecticut, who came in top 20. And that makes it five to three. So with 4.16 remaining in the second quarter, five to three now. Possession to Harvard. 
Violation on the faceoff. Owen Umansky getting his first of the day, I believe, Eric. He was a real high-end recruit out of Governor's Academy just up north a little bit. Harvard's own view is incredible. That view we just saw, you can see how athletic Teddy Malone knew exactly where he was. So with 105 remaining in this first half, Harvard has possession once again. So they have really held up on the faceoff so far today. Held up even more than that. They've outfaced off Virginia, but it's given away here. And the Cavaliers on possession with under a minute remaining. Trying to stem the tide of the momentum over number two, Virginia, the 16th ranked Crimson, with a really impressive second quarter to go again from down two to one to up six to three. How did they do that in quarter number two? I think it was they just became aware of who they were, slowed the ball down, played very, very efficiently offensively. And they're going quickly right off the jump. First shot missed wide from Matt Barocco, the sophomore, as you said, someone who hasn't played a ton so far this year, but getting an opportunity today. Situations. He had just four goals total last year. He has five goals this year on the man up. He's an incredible shooter, so accurate inside five yards. We're getting a shout out to Liam Banks, who coached him a few years ago, who mentioned his name this week in a phone call I had off the air, talking about just how determined he is, the West Coaster, to find a role and really have a good year. And now 11 straight overall, going back to last season. And it is eight to three. And this is now just a, a, a total stunner in terms of where the score is right now. Virginia going quickly though, and they take advantage. Launched it, goal from Tommy McNeil. His first of the season and just his second point. And oh boy, did Virginia need that. It's now eight to four. Face off, ground ball, a goal as a response, as a reaction to the Crimson stepping up. You see how fast that the Cavaliers can play. Virginia plays whistle to whistle. They're so dynamic, so athletic, and just gigantic physically. So that's a tough save for Christian Barner to make on the hoops. I know that's a little different than what Lars Tiffany was talking about with Joel in terms of that early offense, but just getting an unsettled sequence there and just beating the Harbor defense back. Here the whistle goes against Virginia, so the Crimson will get possession out of it. Under 10 minutes to go in what's been a lively start to the second half of this third quarter. It is eight to five, the Crimson lead. Virginia has scored now two of the last three goals in this game after Harvard built their biggest lead to four a couple of different times, and Virginia wins the faceoff here. So the faceoffs, which Harvard had pretty heavily been in control of, for a while, they had won nine of the first 14, but Virginia takes that one here. And we'll see all about Millen on the setup. Easy goal that Cormier will find. His second of the game for Peyton Cormier. And Jerry Byrne, I think is asking, yep, he's asking, he's got the challenge flag down. The officials just did not see it at first before putting that face off down, but the challenge flag was on the turf before. I'm gonna dare say this next three minutes is really, really critical for the Crimson here. They do not want to have to chase and play catch up after being up. I think this first group positioning on the shot, and you mentioned it after that sequence where it felt like Harvard had had their chances, couldn't convert, but a great opportunity and another face-off win, by the way, for the Crimson. They're back on it right now. So and Guess comes in, but that's against Harvard last time out. I think you just mentioned the reasons because the last two games were Yale and Princeton. These are Ivy League top five matchups and Harvard is weathering the storm. The kids are growing up. The players are rising in class, you can say, through experience. So I would also like to proudly say I was on the sideline here at Harvard when we beat Duke and Coach Cassis was actually, I think, on the team in the early 2000s. The, uh, the whole day, doesn't it? It's been one of those games where whoever can score two or three in a row, you're going to help yourself out. But both teams are struggling here in the second half to separate a little bit. Virginia going quickly off a face-off win. Right in, big hit. Right in front of the net. Backup will stay here with Virginia. Rear goals. On his way to a third consecutive 50-plus goal scoring season. And now a little momentum for Virginia. Off of another face-off win on the ground ball by Chismar. 10-7 is our score now, and UVA back to work on the offensive end. 
I think it's remarkable how odd. So Colsey gets it within 10 to 8. 11th goal of the season from the sophomore. Now all of a sudden Virginia playing with possession. Right in quickly goes Colucci and he missed it wide. That's Colucci's second shot this half. So third goal of the season for the Baltimore native. And Virginia has got another face off here. They're, they're five for five in the fourth quarter. And what was a 10-6 game, what felt like just moments ago, all of a sudden is 10 to nine. It's weird. His second goal, and it is 10 to 10. And honestly, I don't know, the biggest difference here is the face-offs just totally switched to Virginia. I think you're right. I think we've seen Harvard change their personnel a little bit in this second half. Not that that's done it, but I think the continual momentum that Matty Barocco had in that first time since this game was two to one. My goodness. Here's your face off win for Harvard. And first look one in a while. They're back out there with. You like to see this going back to that. I'll call it the B group. I don't want the other end with Sam King. Let's get back to that face off here. Can Greg Campisi come through here when his teammates need it? And Matty Barocco makes something happen. Well, it's another ground ball for Colucci, one by Virginia. To their credit, they have scored quite a bit here, and there's a flag down on the field. But my goodness, has this game flipped completely at the faceoff? Like they went out of their plan, and they have just stuck with it and totally flipped this game. They've taken that old high school football motto, make them stop it before you running something different. And Virginia has simply run their offense, that high double picks on both sides to get their personnel opportunities in space. And L Lars Tiffany's gotta be so happy with how the, the face off has gone as well, considering all of these different players trying to figure out who's the best option, doing it without Gobriel today, who is out once again. And the main guy has